and welcome to another video tutorial with me. Um, as I have said in my last video, I had another request for a species tutorial. This time we are going to take on the mink, or mink, yeah, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Um, it's a species that appeared in Enterprise, and it's this young lad here. And we are going to see if we can turn Matthew McConaughey into a mink. Now I chose this capture here because it's uh, the closest that I could find a mink picture in the head position close to the picture of Matthew. Um, you can take any picture you like that works better with whatever head position you have. If you can find them because there was only one or two episodes that they appeared in which makes it a bit difficult. <laughs> so I chose this picture and what I did was I just box selected this copy and paste it into this file and then I blew this picture up a little bit in the size with Control T for transform. I turned this half invisible here so I could see both layers and adjust it a bit so that the eyes and the mouth, nose, maybe the ears, are kind of aligned. So after you've done that you click here on this little arrow and then we bring the opacity up to 100 again. Now what we're gonna do is we try to keep as much of Matthew's face and bring in these um, ridges and bulges we have around the eyes here that are typical of the mink. That means we're going to have to erase a lot of stuff and the way I do it, as always, will be with the mask layer. So, uh, layer mask. <laughs> so we click on the picture with the mink face, click on add layer mask, make sure that we are on this then we grab a black brush and I make it a soft one for now. This size can be a bit bigger because we have to get rid of a lot of stuff. So <coughs> we are going around this kind of roughly at the moment. We don't need this bottom face. Just ignore that this face is kind of purple. That's base. That's actually the light in the scene. And we will adjust that later. So we don't go too close here to keep those ridges and bulges intact. We will fix some stuff later that will make them blend better. So now we can go in and adjust a bit more. Again control T for transform. You can rotate, you can scale. This won't be perfect, of course, because the head positions don't fit completely, but we can work with this. Now let's go to transform and scale. We could have gone with control T again, but The recording makes my Photoshop a little bit laggy, <laughs> so this is difficult. Um, a little bit of perspective. There we go. Now, 
um, this soft line we keep here because there should be a soft blending. We keep this to what I want to take care of is actually this edge around here. Oops. For this we change the brush to a hard edge. Make sure the spacing is down to 1% so we don't have these vowels in the line. And then we go along this edge here to give this a sharp edge. Yeah. And there around the hairline as well. We can keep this for now. Just blend nicer. And there. Now the first thing that we do is to try adjusting the color. Now this is very, very purple. So um, there are a couple of things we can do and I haven't tried this before making this tutorial so this will be like testing along while working on it. And first I think I go with the color balance to see how this works and make it a clipping layer to the mank layer. I hold the alt key and move my mouse between them that means that the color balance only affects the main layer here. Let me call this main layer so you know what it is. Um, okay, color balance. We try to take out the magenta, put in a bit more red, a bit more yellow, and just mid tones. try to adjust some things, play around with the layer with the sliders and see what works best. This isn't a, too bad, this is what's dark. Now let's go to the brightness and contrast, make this a cl um, clipped layer too. we will have to try to adjust it so it fits to the lighting that is in the picture already like the highlights here the shadow here so um, this is stuff that we can do manually um, with overlayers and blending options as you can see here there's hair poking through so we want to solidify this a little bit go back onto the layer mask uh, here and with white go over this so there's no shine through. Um, as we can see on this picture here, Mink do not have eyebrows so we will have to take these eyebrows away and actually where the eyebrows would be there are these bulges here so we need to move this down a bit, like this. Yeah. That means we need to make this softer here too. There, a bit softer. So we take care of the other color stuff later. So first we will take away the brows. So I disable the mink layer here. Go onto the Matthew McConaughey and add a new layer with this little item here. Then I will go to the clone 
stem tool, make the brush a bit bigger, and go to current and below. That will sample the layer below, which means we can add the clone stamp without actually adding it to the actual picture. So you just go here, press Alt, click for sample here, and then we can go over this brow. Same we do on the other side to get rid of this brow here. Now we don't see the brows anymore. <coughs> so, next thing we will do is we try to adjust this mank stuff a little bit better. We can try desaturation, clip it, and desaturate a little. Let me see if we can adjust the color a bit more like this. back to zero. Grab selective color, see if that helps. Always make sure to clip this here to make sure that only the prosthetics are getting adjusted, not the whole face. What I'm trying right now is to make it fit on one side, so the other side we can manually change. Or at least fit it as close as possible right now. Usually when I ta make pictures I take a lot of more time and care for this but it would be very, very boring for you guys to watch me play with these sliders for hours and hours. So Some of these I'm just testing to see if they have any effect. Most don't. There, this one does. So one thing that I'm going to do is I will add some color to these sampling by the skin that is surrounding this prosthetics. So a new layer, clipping this, then I grab a brush, make it a nice big one, and then I'm grabbing some color here and going over this. Grabbing some color here, going over this, grabbing some color here, going over this, and so on. Then, after this is done, I am going to check with the different blending modes what looks best. So color might work. Looks a bit weird right now. But let me check some other... I'm just browsing through them here. Let's see if anything works okay. Okay. Mm let me go back to color and
then I'm going to add a new layer to add a bit more color or shadows and stuff like this playing around with some different of these blending modes mixing and matching and stuff like this because um, using only one usually doesn't work well so this is a multiply layer but at 100% it's definitely too strong but if I bring it down like this you can see that it works much better so I'm trying this okay after that I bring another layer in and bring some of this lighter color here There, that's much better already. You're just going to bring down the opacity a bit. And we have now a before and right now, which is not too bad. Now that we have taken care of this side so far, we go back to the other side. So make a new layer, bring in this a bit over here grip color sample and start using it here doesn't work in this case at all. So what we do is we delete this, make a new layer, go to overlay and we'll make this a bit brighter. Right now it's way too bright but we can bring the opacity down. Make a new layer, opacity like 40. is really really hard I have to say because this side is much lighter than this side so what we're gonna do is try some of these here like a brightness contrast that is only working on one side so first we lightness contrast and then make sure that we paint on the mask here that we only want one side affected so we paint all over this in black here this way we can put some shadows in there yeah just a little then we take use saturation clip it then we press on this layer mask thumbnail from the brightness and contrast, hold down the alt key and bring it up to the use saturation that copies the alpha so it affects the same area and then we go in there and bring down the saturation a bit see if we can adjust the color slightly if it does anything at all so now we do this We might have to do something about the position of this Meng thing. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to move this. And only this 
this part I want to adjust. So I'm going here, transform, skew, and I want to move this up here a bit. Now I am quite aware that all this color stuff that we have here has been used on the lower part of this and that the alpha here doesn't fit anymore either so we go in oh, first I have to bring down the spacing then we go in here and adjust this see where we go. I am lagging really bad right now. Okay, this was this. Then we <coughs> don't sample all layers. Let's go in here and blur this little gap. Yeah. This isn't perfect, but also because the original picture with the blowing up and everything has been a bit blurry. So we go in again and round this a little bit here. And once we have all this and we go in with another brush and do a bit of highlighting here because there's light coming that is on this his face here. Then we do a bit of shadow underneath so it looks a bit more three dimensional. Not perfect, but it's okay. So let me take the brown instead of the black. Looks better. So as we can see, it's still too bright here. So instead of trying to adjust the main prosthetics now, we are going in and try to adjust his face. So we put our color layer down there above the layer that covers the eyebrows. Grab color from the prosthetics. I put the flow on 27 to have only a little bit of color added there. So the texture of the skin is still coming through as you can see here. this and a bit of color here too now one thing is it will never be really perfect because we don't have enough texture in this prosthetics we don't have the 100% correct positioning of the head and um, <coughs> that will always always be a problem but you can make him look kind of like a make <laughs> that is what we try to achieve here there's something I'm really unhappy with right now one second yeah it's in here There, this shadow. Too dark. Okay, back to skin color. Going around here a little bit. And here, there's a bit of shadow there. Let's see if 
we can try a little trick here, make a new layer, clip it, fill it with black, and go to filter noise, add noise, uniform monochromatic, doesn't too much lower number there, and then we go to screen, and bring the opacity down a bit, but that will add a little bit of texture like pores of the skin, for example. So this isn't perfect, but it's something we can deal with. There, it's just a really subtle little addition that makes it look less like plastic. And then make a new layer underneath actually. Bring overlay, then edit fill 50% grey. You don't see anything right now, but then you can use the burn and dodge tool to add shadows and highlights without destroying the original picture. So we can go in here and burn in a couple of more of these edges here to bring out the main features a little bit more. Like here. Adding a little bit of this here. Again, it's just a subtle difference, but it can make a total difference, as you can see here. It just pronounces that a little bit more. And I do the same again for the highlights. 50% grey, okay. Dodge tool, exposure, far down of 20, or oh, even less actually. So I just add subtle highlights for the 3D effects. And bring down the opacity a little there without and with that can make a lot of difference. And then I see that the, his skin is definitely a little bit more orange. So let me bring one last layer. With color. Let's try with color. I don't know if that will work, but we'll see. So no, color didn't work. So, I'm not going into the whole 
cutting out the hair and the body and the putting into uniform or anything because it was all about the mink. So, um, while this isn't perfect, this is the best mink that I can do in this 30 minutes that we have been working here. Um, if you find better screen caps, make yourself better screen caps or find better pictures that are in the exact same position that you will really need for this, you can make it much, much nicer. This was just a quick walkthrough to see what we can do and how to adjust certain parts, how to bring the prosthetics together with the actual picture. So I hope that this has helped you and that you can play around with it and not only with this one but with actually any kind of prosthetics that you put on a face. This it's always the same process. You bring the prote the protet prosthetics. Yes, I forgot how to English. Um, you bring the prosthetics in. You adjust them to the face as much as possible. You change the colors, the levels, the color balance. You add colors. You add highlights and shadows, and all these neat little things. And in the end, you hope that something comes out that looks like the species you're going for also works the same with any kind of scars or other parts that you put on the body. You always have to make sure that the the skin works together, that the edges are soft and not too harsh. Because if I would just go in with a hard brush right now, it would look like you paste it on. And you don't want to look like stuff is pasted on. That is why you work so hard on this. So. I hope this was helpful and I can't wait to see what you guys do with this and let's see lots of different prosthetics pictures <laughs> and uh, this was the main tutorial thank you for uh, Skyfire to suggest it and I see you next time stay creative bye bye